If you look around you right now, chances are you are seeing the direct result of a BIM software. It is basically everywhere and you just can't escape it. So, what exactly is BIM? BIM, also known as Building Information Modeling, is the technology of creating and managing information on construction projects using their virtual models. These virtual models help architects and engineers visualize the building to identify any potential design, construction or operational issues. I guess with every other thing turning into something virtual these days, there's no escape even for actual buildings. The process of BIM is supported by various tools, technologies, and digital representations. These are usually computer files which can be extracted, exchanged, or networked to make a decision regarding a built asset. BIM software is used by individuals or businesses who plan to construct and operate a diverse selection of physical infrastructures such as water, electricity, gas, roads, railways, bridges, ports, and even tunnels. So the next time you drive through a tunnel, be grateful that BIM saved your life. The first tool developed for modeling buildings emerged in the late 1970s by the late Chuck Eastman. Eastman stated that the alternative to using drawings as building records could be provided by using a computer system that allows manipulating information about design. This system was called BDS, also known as the Building Description System. It included a graphical user interface, orthographic and perspective views, and a sortable database that allowed users to retrieve information with categories including material type, and supplier. Eastman claims that drawings are inefficient and criticizes them for their inability to represent buildings as their innovations occur. I mean, when you think about it, drawings are really out of fashion. Another pioneer in the sector, Jonathan Ingram, worked on software such as Rucaps, Sonata, and Reflex. These tools differed from other architectural drafting tools by adding further information, including time, cost, manufacturer's details, sustainability, and maintenance to the building model. The first software, RuCaps, was based on the two-and-a-half-dimensional concept originally proposed in BDS. The program attached 2D drawings to individual objects to show detailed representations of the object in different perspectives, yet it struggled to contain information regarding building data. Ingram pursued his own vision to develop Sonata in 1986, which was arguably the world's first true BIM-capable application. Sonata introduced early examples of parametric modeling and object-oriented design, where individual objects would adjust differently depending on their relation and interaction with other object categories. For instance, windows and doors would automatically embed into walls and generate details, allowing the software to rapidly generate and update construction plans, sections, and 3D perspectives. After several years of development, Sonata would develop into the more user-friendly program Reflex, which was sold to the company PTC. On a side note, these software required advanced desktop workstations, which were quite expensive at the time and consequently not available to the general public. So long story short, there is a heck lot of software. The first commercial BIM product for personal computers was none other than ARCHICAD, which was released in 1987. The development for ARCHICAD started in 1982 for the Apple Lisa by the Hungarian company Graphisoft. At the time, ARCHICAD was considered revolutionary for its ability to store large amounts of information within 3D models. The software allowed users to create a virtual building with elements like walls, slabs, roofs, doors, windows, and furniture. It would be fair to mention that up until the early 2000s, the term building information modeling would not be popularly used. That changed in 2002 when Autodesk released a white paper titled Building Information Modeling. The approach abandoned the graphics-first design software in favor of database-first technology, which created a single source that could be shared by multidisciplinary design and construction teams. And last but not least, Revit. Playing a significant part in the BIM market, Revit was first released by Autodesk in April 2000. The intention was more or less similar to those of other BIM software, yet Revit's difference to other BIM software allowed users to create parametric components in a family editor, rather than a programming language. This allowed the model to capture relationships between all components, which meant that any change to a single element would automatically generate to keep the whole model consistent. 
For instance, moving a wall updated the surrounding walls, floors and roofs, while correcting the placement and values of dimensions. This ease of making changes inspired the name Revit, which is a contraction of Revise Instantly. Moreover, the adoption of BIM has progressed at different speeds in different countries, which led to specific standards being allocated to each country. However, because every country has its own BIM standards, communication between BIM projects could cause unwanted conflicts. In an effort to form a common international language, a new standard called ISO 19650 was developed in the United Kingdom. This standard is based on the proven English standard BS 1192 and promises to bridge the gap between different standards. It's just like different languages for different countries, except their buildings. BIM covers more than just geometry. It covers spatial relationships, geospatial information, properties of building components, asset management, sustainability, manufacturing details, and many more. With these features, BIM allows the extraction of different views from the building models for drawing production and other uses. Professional users such as architects, surveyors, civil engineers, and structural engineers generally utilize BIM to share information. Each professional adds specific data from their field to the shared model, which combines several different disciplines into one. With the combination of these disciplines, BIM enables visualization of all models in a single environment, better coordination, and improved decision-making. Thank you, BIM. Make sure to check out Pacademy's workshops in the links below. Pacademy is an educational platform powered by Parametric Architecture to spread the idea of using parametric design and computational tools in architecture. Pacademy has broadened its collaboration with pioneering architects and designers dealing with diverse and numerous topics such as computational design, 3D printing, robotic fabrication, procedural methods, space architecture, metaverse design, design in VR, AR, and many more topics. You can register and join the live workshops or watch the previous studio's workshop recordings. To learn more, you can visit parametricarchitecture.com slash pacademy. Thank you for watching and don't forget to subscribe to our channel and hit the bell notification to not miss any new uploads. See you at the next episode.